Hello, um, good afternoon. My name is Sergio Contrino. I work at Intermine and the University of Cambridge. Um, I will talk about uh, uh, the work we have done to make uh, Intermine following more closely the FAIR uh, data principle. I said we, but actually the work that I will present is, was mostly done by Daniela Butano, that couldn't be here today. And I will also use some slides from your UD. The outline of the talk, I, I will um, describe briefly what uh, Intermine is. Uh, I will mention FAIR, and then I will uh, um, illustrate the, the four uh, um, action that we took to, to um, obtain this closer uh, um, adherence with the FAIR data principle. So <clears throat> Intermine is, a, is a, a data warehouse system integrates uh, data from multiple data source. Uh, is, it, the data is then stored in, uh, in a Postgres database and is uh, Java-based. Um, accessibility to the data um, is done through web apps. This is the homepage um, of U1 Mind. That is one of the two mind that we maintain in-house. There is also um, a vast um, portfolio of web services, and we also provide a client library for uh, the more common uh, languages. And um, <clears throat> accessibility is also ensured by a very sophisticated uh, query system. Um, sophisticated in the sense that it's the, the, is the most generic uh, query system, and uh, Results are displayed usually uh, through results table, like the one that is uh, depicted here, uh, where you have also some uh, summary uh, information for each column. Um, there is uh, uh, reusability is um, uh, provided by the export function. You can export the data that you have queried in a different format. There is also <coughs> uh, reproducibility because we, you, you, we automatically generate the code for reproduce this query in the languages we said uh, before. Other way to assess the data is through visualization tools, and we have also um, a few um, statistical tools like enrichment on list uh, of data. Um, <coughs> Uh, we are uh, um, uh, building a new user interface for the, for the in Intermine, and uh, this is entirely uh, powered by web services. Um, you can play with it at the, at the it's in a beta, beta phase, uh, and you can play with it at the URL bef uh, below there. And uh, Yo is also presenting a poster, so you, you will be very welcome to inquire there. So FAIR, as uh, you all know, is a, is a set of principles for uh, optimal use of research data and also is a nicely working acronym about findable, accessible, interoperable, and uh, reusable. Uh, in uh, reassessing how Intermine uh, is um, adhering to this principle, we use mostly the two references that uh, are indicated there. And from this uh, assessment, we came up with four uh, um, uh, action item that we broadly divided here in the, in the fair uh, principal categories. Um, we needed to improve our uh, access URL to, to the data that the, the mine display. Uh, we, we wanted to add uh, um, markup to our web page for, the, for, for uh, machine uh, uh, findability. Uh, improve the ontology usage and also uh, the license information. And I think there is a... So the, 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 the bigger uh, um, issue was probably the, the permanent uh, URL, the, the access to the, to the data. Uh, we are a data warehouse, so mostly we integrate uh, uh, data from other sources. So. Uh, we have, um, but we have also some uh, mind that uh, is a sort of principal provider of, of the data that is displayed. Um, uh, these two cases, uh, um, we have devised uh, uh, a, a schema to deal with uh, these cases, and we added the um, situation that 
Uh, we also want to provide uh, data for, for the decoration of the web pages, and, and we use a slightly different strategy that I will uh, illustrate uh, uh, now. <clears throat> and there is a blog post uh, regarding all the working for deciding how to deal with the URL. So the, the first situation is uh, data that we integrate from other sources. We wanted to provide a local identifier that was uh, easy to remember and uh, could be stable. You have to notice that um, Intermine is built, um, each time is rebuilt, and so uh, we are, we, at the moment, the, the actual, uh, the, the main uh, identification was an identifier that was changing at each uh, iteration of the, of the build. Um, so for, for this table identifier, uh, local stable identifier, we decided on a schema of the, tap, the type uh, illustrated here, data type uh, plus identifier. The data type uh, is the, the class uh, that, uh, of the object that we are uh, displaying, in this example, the protein. And uh, as an identifier, we uh, use the primary identifier from the main source providing uh, the data. In that case, uh, Uniprot, so you see here a uh, Uniprot uh, identifier. Um, for us, uh, the, the, the great advantage for, for us for, uh, compared to other uh, possible uh, solution was the, the, um, the, the readability, of course, and, and, but also the, the fact that there is practically no configuration needed for this sort of uh, uh, schema. Uh, since uh, Intermine is used by different group, uh, that um, we didn't want to burden uh, other developer with uh, even more configuration. Uh, this same uh, um, datum that uh, um, we wanted to make uh, easy, easily, uh, easily accessible. Um, uh, when uh, we were uh, going to decorate the, the, the page with uh, um, uh, permanent uh, identifier uh, that are machine readable. We didn't want to uh, multiply uh, permanent identifier that are already there. So, in, for example, in this example of the, a protein or uniprot protein, uh, we decided that for uh, uh, RDF generation, for example, we will be using the permanent identifier that the uh, original uh, source uh, provides. Um, but as, as I mentioned before, uh, sometimes the, um, the mine itself is the sort of principal uh, source for, uh, for, the, um, for the data. Um, in this case, we use a, a similar, uh, the, 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 um, is the same um, schema, of course, with the type and the identifier. The identifier now is really local in the sense that it is um, from the, the mine itself. But we also <clears throat> uh, plan to register the, the mine to, to identifier.org so that um, through identifier.org we can uh, furnish a permanent URI. So uh, the permanent URI that you see there is the one that will be also in our RDF uh, generation. That uh, um, illustrates the import importance of registering uh, uh, your resources, uh, we do that with identifier.org and we have planned for uh, a few more um, uh, uh, things to do with them, like uh, uh, being as a secondary source for, uh, for the data. And all Intermine are also uh, registered with the far sharing uh, that link to all the main uh, Intermine page, the, the home page. And we link also, uh, we um, register also some tools with BioTools. So I talked before about the decoration of web page. Uh, at the moment, the main thing that we're doing is uh, adding JSON-LD uh, annotation to web uh, page. We are, um, these are then uh, indexed by the Google dataset search. And uh, as you know, bioschema.org is extending the schema.org uh, for uh, life science. And uh, we will um, uh, follow this uh, extension when they happen. At the moment, uh, the two uh, types uh, that are, we are, uh, um, uh, for, for which we are producing JSON-LD are data catalog and data set. Data catalog, uh, is uh, in the display in the mine uh, homepage. 
uh, and the data set for each uh, uh, report page for the each data set. And as soon as um, Bioschema.org come up with a new profile for gene proteins, so we will add also those. And I think that should be pretty close in time. Uh, this is an example for um, JSON LD for the um, data catalog. Um, it's just to show that, um, for example, this is the, the, the situation for fly mine, uh, the other mine that we maintain in-house. In, in uh, there is a collection of data set. Uh, here I just show the, the, the data set fly base. And what happens now if you search in the Google dataset search uh, for Flybase, you also get uh, Flymine as a secondary data source. Um, <coughs> Fly, um, Intermine is uh, based mostly on the sequence ontology database, but for, um, for, uh, improve, uh, for improving the, the interoperability of uh, Intermine data, uh, we needed also to uh, annotate more um, extensively the, the, uh, our usage of ontology. Um, the, the, we, in practice, we annotate the, our data model with, uh, with all the ontology terms that we need. Um, this uh, uh, ontology um, annotation will be then be used during the RDF uh, generation. Um, in, in the process of uh, um, uh, filling up all the uh, holes that we, we still have with the uh, terms in, in class or, or um, attributes in the mine, we, um, we use uh, the bioportal, uh, bioontology.org, sorry, and the ontology lookup service to find them. And we ended up with uh, six uh, ontology that we are using to cover uh, all the uh, intermine. Um, so this is just to show that uh, we, we did all the, the, the work, of course, for the, the sequence ontology and uh, the additional data type that uh, we have in the core intermine model. Um, but intermine is, uh, as I said before, extens extensible. So. Um, if uh, an intermine, a mine developer is um, extending uh, the, the sequence ontology term that is used in the mine, this is also automatic, but for other uh, term, this search is uh, for, for annotating them, that is still manual. And I think we have to stay like that because you need also the, 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 the domain uh, knowledge to, to do that. And we are uh, back to data license that is, uh, uh, as uh, said in the, in the previous talk, said that is needed for um, reusability of the data. From the technical point of view, for us was not uh, a big uh, issue. Technically, it's, it's rather straightforward. We added a, a license field uh, to the data set. Uh, we have updated all our parser to record data licenses. Um, we, did the, the, we added the, the data license to offer all the core and intermine data sources, and we display it in the report page for the data set. Um, this is more or less what you get for uh, human mind, I think. Um, as you probably noticed, uh, and being wiser from, from the previous talk, uh, while technically it was not uh, difficult, in this, during this um, work we noticed that very few, well, very few, a, a sort of a minority had a clear data license from, from the data set, the data sources that we were uh, using in the core uh, intermine. Um, uh, apparently we were being a bit uh, less fortunate than, uh, than said, so we have even worse uh, uh, statistics here. And, um, and again, uh, we had the same problem that sometimes the information was uh, confusing and not clear and so And uh, also for that, there is a, a blog post uh, that dwell a little bit more on this. Um, all these uh, um, Features that I have illustrated are uh, uh, released in Intermine 4.0. 
that is um, even if we did a switch of uh, version number, uh, is not disruptive, so you can update uh, without, for example, adding your uh, license uh, that uh, won't break your code. Um, what we plan to do next is to generate the RDF that is still uh, missing from, from the action plan that I showed at the beginning. And uh, with this, uh, I would like to thank you, uh, to, to thank the organizer to, for inviting us here. And, um, and uh, well, and especially the BBRC that is uh, actually funding this specific work. So thank you very much.